Hello and welcome to the Methods More Resolves Alpha Dungeon Guide. I'm Chris Potter and here with me is Zerips. Hey guys. This dungeon is one of the more recent dungeons to be released on the Alpha and it is in our opinion one of the coolest so far. The trash leading up to the first boss can be quite tricky. First of all there's these big guys that do a barber spear ability that applies a bleed effect to people standing in front of it. So make sure not to stand in front of it. They also have the ability Fracture which is going to send out a wave of rocks in the direction they choose so you need to be careful of that as well. You're also going to have these birds fly down and they're going to apply disease effects which can strain the healer if the other avoidable damage isn't avoided. If you're a healer with a disease to spell you should try to dispel it as much as you can. The pack right before the first boss will have two extra abilities in the other packs. One of the big guys will do an ability called Defiant Strike where he'll basically run around swing his weapon around cleaving everyone and after he's done running around he's going to slam the ground in front of him. You should make sure to avoid both parts of that ability. The other new thing on this pack is that one of the mobs will cast a spell called Flare which sends out fire damage to the tank or random targets, we're not really sure but it doesn't really do that much. The first boss you come to is called Yimron and he is probably one of the least exciting bosses in this dungeon. Yimron has a set of 4 abilities. The first ability we encountered was called Dark Slash which is a tank ability. You'll need to use a small cooldown such as Shield Block or bark skin or whatever you find necessary to deal with the incoming damage. After that he'll cast Screams of the Dead, which is basically a 12 yard fear. This mechanic really only affects melee and tanks, so just to make sure, when he starts the cast you'll move out and when it's finished you'll just move back into either DPS and or tank the boss. Now while that fear is avoidable, his next ability called Winds of Northrend is not and it will knock back everyone in the group dealing minor damage no matter where you are. His last ability is Bane. He will summon some purple essences to swirl around the room and if the player touches one it will explode dealing high damage to them and also dealing group damage. This is pretty easy to avoid but you should be especially careful with where your back is facing when the knockback comes so that you don't get knocked back into one of them. In general this boss is pretty simple so you shouldn't have too many issues here. After the boss you have to head up the small hill and click the big horn in order to advance to the next step. Doing this will put you into a cage where you can help yourself by right clicking out of the cage. After being feed out you will have to face off two ads. They'll cast barrels which can be somewhat hard to see but they are dodgeable if you pay enough attention to them. If you get hit though your healer should be able to top you off somewhat quickly. They also have a cast called Soul Siphon, which is a targeted spell which stuns the caster if not interrupted. Following the ship on the left side will lead you to do another two big ads. The only thing here is that they really dash towards the player and then they do a frontal feed. You can easily move out of it. After that you'll encounter some dogs and a big ad. The big ad channels an uninterrupted spell which needs to be healed through, otherwise it's just tank and spank. Shortly before getting onto the deck there's a big ad which really only does a breath on the tank and it is again easy to move out of. After that you'll encounter the two last ads, they'll cast another fear which should be interrupted. Taking the corridor up and you'll face off to the second boss. When you come up above deck at the second boss, the scenery is really amazing. The sea is going crazy and there's waves crashing and it's just like a massive storm and it just looks really cool. His first ability is called Cosmic Scythe, which is basically dealing damage in the line where the graphic effect is showing. You just need to move out of it quickly. Throughout the fight, the boss will choose random players and fragment their souls. This will stun them and it's going to summon two adds with really low health that you need to kill to free the guy from the stun. After you've freed them by killing off these low add souls, a new mob will spawn called Shackled Servitor. This mob should be killed off fast and interrupted. After the second boss, you'll continue your trip down the ship. 
you'll see a lot of ads running towards you. You shouldn't fear. Just stay back and you can encounter them one at a time. The first that you'll encounter has two abilities. One which is a frontal cleave for the tank and another one is the fear, which again needs to be interrupted. The next couple of rads is a bit more random, so to say. They cast a Shadow Bolt on a random member and it doesn't really deal much damage. They also have a big AoE called Whirlpool of Souls. It hits people within 5 or 10 yards range. Again, doesn't do much damage, so easy to heal through. From there, it's just tank and spank with the mobs up until you face the mini boss. And this mini boss um, basically just summons some small adds that actually can do a lot of damage to the group if you ignore them. But they have really low health, so you should just kill them off as fast as possible. He also has a like, charging dash ability that does some damage to everyone in the direction he faces, so make sure to dodge that as well. He will also do a cast that stacks a magic debuff on the group, increasing the damage taken by 5% per stack. But it can be interrupted and he doesn't cast it that often, so it's nothing really to worry about. After the mini boss, you're going to jump down to the end of the boat, and this boss fight is absolutely epic while you drink for the first time. It feels really crazy and hectic and completely mad while you're doing it, but in actual fact the boss isn't doing too much. The fight is sort of split into two phases, and in the first phase the boss is just chilling in the water. However, while she's chilling in the water, she does do some abilities. Grasping tentacles will appear on the side of the ship, and they appear not to really to do anything, however they are useful to us because killing them will deal some damage to the boss and you need to get the boss to 50% to phase her to the next phase. During the fight the boss will cast Taint of the Sea, which puts a debuff on a player dealing ticking damage to them. When it's dispelled or expires, it deals group wide damage. The best way to deal with the debuff is just to dispel it instantly, unless of course someone in the group is close to dying in which case you should wait and heal them up first. Throughout the first phase, the boss is also casting a spell called Torrent, which just does random damage to the group and it really isn't noticeable. It's just to uh, have some damage going out if you avoid the other stuff. Eventually, you will get it to 50% and the second phase will begin. In the second phase, you will have to face off some tentacles. One of them is called Piercing Tentacle, which basically pierces through this ship and deals random damage to a random player for 3 seconds. After that it will go down into the sea and it will reappear again after 3 seconds doing the same thing. After that it will vanish and never appear again. You should be careful though because it leaves a hole in the ship which you can fall into and it will stun you for 3 seconds and deal a significant amount of damage. Second out is a destructor tentacle. These are the tentacles you need to kill in order to actually damage the boss. They'll also cast a debuff on a random player, it will hit you 3 times and then it will leave a bleed on you. This effect stacks, so you need to kill them as fast as possible. The tank will however need to be in melee range with the boss, for the boss not to randomly start casting Wing Buffet, which increases physical damage taken. After that you get into phase 3 and shortly after the boss dies. Overall, really amazing scenery and a very well dungeon overall. Yeah, this was a really nice dungeon scenery wise. Um, it definitely felt really epic. And this concludes our guide for the More of Souls Alpha Dungeon. We hope you found it helpful. Be sure to check out our other guides, the other Alpha Dungeons. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.